Hello and welcome to this info boxing for Pendulum, the new game from Stomar Games designed by Travis Jones, art by Robert Leesk. Quite a polarising and controversial release this. Stomar Games have uh, made some pretty amazing games over the last few years. Wingspan, Scythe, Viticulture, Tapestry. And I think as such, everyone has heard of them, which is giving everyone obviously the right to have an opinion. Unfortunately, in the way it is modern times, opinions either have to be really positive or really negative. But what I'm going to try and do is give you a bit more of a, an honest opinion of what's in this box and what you can expect to play it. So let's take a look. First up, the, the art on this box. Absolutely love it. And interestingly, this has been one of the criticisms for the game, largely in that the theme depicted on this box has no real bearing of the game inside which in truth is is true. This game is largely devoid of, of a strong theme. They, they tried to add a theme to it, which is prevalent, present in the, the art, on the cards, the game boards. Um, there's a good story in the, in the rules, but in truth, you won't really feel it as you're playing the game. So I've played this game quite a lot. So one thing you're gonna get from this info box and is how hard this game is to pack away. Um, but here's, here's the story on the front of the on the rules feel free to pause here and and have a read but it's pretty cool it's basically about the fact that there's this whole world that's in chaos and they're looking for a new ruler of, of dunya which is the name of this world where you will be able to get some control back to the land very clear rules a lot of repetition i will say they really want to make it clear that you don't make some mistakes despite the fact that a lot of people are still making mistakes with this with this game but this game really isn't as difficult as some are making out but um there's a nice little one pager here for the setup which you can use after probably your first go you don't need the rules anymore i found i learned this, these rules pretty simply to be honest with you good or autumn rules as is usually the case with with stomar games um this is the board that you use for the the council vase very thick stock as you can see here no bend whatsoever um very clear what you're doing here you, you put your cards here draft them out here this always has a card on it that allows you to turn one of your small meeples into a grande. And then this is just a, an action that's always available. Just choose one of these score points here. So pretty good quality for that, I would say. And, and just quickly going back to the, the rule sheet, it's very similar paper to stock to what they had in tapestry with that slight sort of granulated feel to it. It's hard to describe, but if you've seen or touched the tapestry one or wings brand one, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, this is the Autumna scoring sheet. Um, again, it has that grainy feel that gives it that um, nice feel when you touch it. Slightly thinner paper stock than the, the council board. Well, quite a lot thinner to be fair, um, but obviously it's not used as much. This is only when you're playing solo. This is gonna be in pretty much every game that you, you play. Then onto the character game mats. All of these are, are double-sided. Um, as such, one criticism um, I have for the game is that when you're placing your score tokens here for your power, popularity, etc., um, they can slip a little bit. Similar to if you've played Isle of Cats or Azul, it probably needs some little upgrade here, which I've already seen a few people have done with 3D printers. Um, I don't know whether Stonemaier themselves will ever do that, but they do get knocked a little bit, which is frustrating as i said double-sided so all the characters have their their simple side here um with these scores on the bottom all being exactly the same for all of these characters when you're on the the simple side the only real real variation is is how many things you start with so here this character starts with with four money and one vote whereas this character starts with two money and and no votes and as you can see at the top there they all have a, a varying amount of points that you need to score. So basically in the game, you're looking to score four things. The um, the gray one here at the bottom, you only need to score this once, obviously, for each, each character. Um, whereas this, you need to get all the way into here. And ideally, what you're trying to get is all of your pieces into this part of the parchment. If everyone does that, it's who's moved over the, the most. If no one's done that, it's who has one token the least far back. I haven't described that very well, but basically, if no one's got all of their pieces over the line, 
if one person had the the worst scorer was was one away, so they've scored negative one, and if somebody had uh, their worst piece two away, they scored negative two, so therefore this person would win. Hopefully that makes sense. But like I said, on the reverse, these game boards are completely different. So now you can see on the bottom, there's very different things that you can look to uh, achieve. This guy is now scoring votes. Um, as you can see, votes are important for this character. Um, he starts with two and gets three whenever he activates um, this power, but he then needs them to get his cards back. So in the game, you're, you're given stratagem cards, which give you some really cool rule breaking powers. The biggest one being you can take workers off the board in a way that normally you would have to wait for a timer. So on the three minute timer, that's a pretty powerful ha thing to have. This guy needs to spend four votes in order to get his, his cards back. Um, which is a pretty cool, pretty cool way to do it. Whereas this character here, this lion chap, um, they're looking to get them back by spending five culture, which they start with two of. So you can see what you need more of. Generally, you're you're given. However, there was is one exception to this rule I found, where um, the hard side, the advanced side of bulk. This character has to spend, and I think this is unique, I'm right in saying this, has to spend actually points up here. Instead of spending things that you get here, either your military or culture or money, um, this character has to spend points, actual points in the game. So his, the power points has to be used to get the, the cards back, which is a bit uh, tricky. I've used this character board because I was quite intrigued by it and it wasn't as difficult as I thought. The main reason being is it's actually, and again, I think I'm right in saying this, it has the least amount of points needed to score. Obviously the power is maxed out, but popularity is two down and the culture here is, is actually really quite, quite low. So if you compare it to some of the other ones, you can see that it's potentially a bit easier in essence to get all of the things up, despite the fact that you're having to reuse power points over and over and over again, which is which is tricky. But I like these, they're really good. The art on these I think is really cool. I like the fact the art is different compared to the different side. The name is different as well. Bulk the Champion versus Bulk the Warmonger. And I like the fact that obviously the asymmetry really kicks in when you're on the advanced player side. I think these are really nice. So let's have a look at the, the board itself. This again has had some fairly large amount of controversy around it. I think probably because of the the color scheme, perhaps it's not immediately clear what you're looking at um, with this board, um, which I, I, I can understand that, that, that makes sense to me. Um, but in, in essence, you're looking at a, a board here where there are four, four major sections to it, well, five in truth, um, but there's only really three that you need to pay attention to. So down here on the left is where you get extra cards to build your engine. We'll come on to that in a bit. It's essentially the theme of it is your conquering lands. So there'll be four cards here with a draw pile here and you can choose whatever one is face up or draw blind if you like. And then you can slip those underneath your player mat here. So whenever you activate these powers, you will then activate those as well. Very similar to any other engine building game that you might play. For me, it feels similar to the Wingspan and engine building from, from Stonewire as well. And then over here in the middle, um, this part is only really used in the council phase, um, which is in between each round. So basically it's whoever is the highest here based on the amount of votes that they've got. They will then have the chance to get two of any points. Whereas if you're second, you get one of any point, And if you're third, you don't get any points at all. Also, whoever's first gets first pick of a new stratagem card, second pick, third pick. That's all this is really used for. And then here, there are certain cards, which I'll show you in a bit, is, which is how you get um, that gray extra point I was talking about, your, your legendary token. So these two parts of the board, you can kind of discount here and here for now. Really, what you're just talk looking at is this purple section here, the green section here, and then the, the black section down there. And again, it looks more complicated than it is, because if you just pay attention to this purple for now, you can see that the top layer is exactly the same as the bottom layer. What, what you're doing, what you're paying, and what you're getting is, is exactly the same. So as the timer flips from top to bottom, 
you'll always have the chance to do the same thing. So initially you're looking at this board and there's a lot of stuff on it, but you'll quickly realize that you can discount two sections and then the other three sections are basically just duplicated. And that's very, very much seen when you actually start playing the game. So just in short, what you're doing is you place a worker here whenever there is no timer. You can't place when there's a timer. Um, you place a worker when the timer is down here, here, into this section or this section. Then when the timer is flipped onto this section, that is now indicating that that worker now is in action. They are, they've gone to work. I kind of see it thematically as like they're clocking into work. You've then got a certain amount of time to do something. And in, in the purple's case, three minutes, which is obviously quite a lot of time. And then up here, you just pay two coins. That's the two yellow things that you, you saw in the player board. Um, two of these, you pay those. And I, I like to put my worker on this to remind myself to do it because it's quite easy to forget to, to do the pay action. And I think it's a good way to teach new players. So you pay your two and then you get the reward, which for this case would be activate your purple for here, get a popularity culture and one vote or here activate your brown. So in this case, if you're activating the brown, you'd get a power. If you're activating your purple, you'd get five culture. So it's, it's very much classic worker placement style of, of the game and, and the green and the black works exactly the same way. The only difference for the player, the double-sided player boards is here you'll see those three spaces um, here on, on that part of the board. That's obviously for one to three players. And on, on the reverse side, you've got space for five. Um, that's the four to five player board. So that's, that's the only difference on the two sides of the board. Everything else is the same. So as I said, I've played this game quite a lot. So this is how I've packed it away. It's not very neat. Um, there's probably a better way that it can be done. But this is, this is my attempt at it. Um, so big controversy in this game is the real time aspect of it. So this is a way that you can play with a timer track. I've played this game quite a lot now and I haven't once used this. Not really interested in that. I feel like I should before I, I do my review. So I will. But uh, for this info box and I, I haven't yet. I think this game is all about the timers. I don't really feel the need to not use them. I've seen other reviewers say the exact opposite. So I guess it just depends on, on your own personal preference. But for me, people aren't using it because they feel like it's pressurized and chaotic with the timers. From what I can say after playing the game quite a lot, including with my seven-year-old son, it is absolutely not chaotic. If anything, it's the other way around. There are certain moments in the game, and I've discussed this with a lot of people, where you're sat there, particularly on the purple timer, which is three minutes, and you're just sitting there going, hurry up, come on, finish. You're not, you're not waiting for these um, timers to, to run out with a with a worrying concern about what you're going to do next it's it's the opposite you're you're waiting for these timers to run out because you're desperate to do the next move so it's not chaotic at all like i said if anything it's it's the other way around where you're just keen to do the next move and sometimes you can get impatient to do the next move but because you have these three timers you've got a three minute a two minute and a 45 second like i said um it, you you're only ever really 45 seconds away from doing something else this 45 second timer goes really quick and if you think about a turn-based game, how often are you only ever 45 seconds away from your next go, your next turn? So as, as such, I think that criticism is perhaps a little unfair because people who are saying it's boring to wait for the timers and you want to take your next move. I do get that and I have experienced elements of that. But like I said, you're only ever 45 seconds away from this ending and potentially being able to do something there. Sure, your workers may all be locked in the two minute or, or three minute, but that's obviously your choice. And you can always be playing your stratagem cards as well. There's lots of moves you can do that aren't time based. So one of the coolest components is probably this. This is how you score your, your, legendary, your legendary point, the gray thing on, on the track here. So you can see that the, the symbol there is, is the same. And the way that you, you score that is you have cards that are placed on the board next to the privilege track that I showed you earlier, um, whereby you will have to do something to get it. So this is placed here. And then if you have eight red cubes, which is the military, and then three votes, you then can take you place your, your marker here, and then you can take this if you're the first one to do it. If you're the second and somebody's already taken this, you can then get the bottom thing, which in this case is the reward of, of five coins, five, 
five yellow. You you can only get this once. You only need this once in, in, in the game. There's four rounds, so there's four chances to get this. So three times you'll just be looking to get what's on the bottom if you've paid attention. So this is obviously another part of a non-timed move, something that you can do when you're waiting for timers. And they're all very different. You can see there's different things at the top that you need to achieve, different things at the bottom that you'll get. These are pretty cool when you actually get points. So obviously here you're getting three points, power, culture and popularity, whereas here it's just money. But in order to get that, you've had to achieve a little bit more at the top in order to to get that reward. And these change, you just shuffle them up and you, you'll just draw one and have four per per game. So I, I like that, that's a nice bit of variety in the game, nice bit of uh, way for the game to, to change somewhat. Um, you have these per player. They, as I said in the rules, there's a lot of repetition. This is where most of the repetition comes from. It's basically saying you can only place a worker when there is no timer. And that worker can go in or out when there's no timer. When there is a timer, that's when they can do an action. That's when they can move down, pay the cost to, to get the reward. So that's sat in front of every player for every game. I pay no attention to it. I, I used it in the first game, haven't used them ever since. You really will get used to this rule quicker than I think the game fears that you will. And on the back, it just talks you through the, the council phase, which is very simple. It all takes just a few minutes. Um, you're basically just seeing who has the most votes, um, and then you set the order accordingly based on that. You then gain rewards, like I showed you earlier, by taking your points and your cards. Check your max um, uh, cards that you've you've been able to conquer. These ones here, I'll come on to that in a bit. You're only allowed to have two at this point. So you have to, if you've got more than two, that's fine. But at this point, you have to discard down to two. You then reset the rounds, put everything back up and place any character worker that you can move at this point. Flip all the timers and, and resume play. And that's important. You resume play. You don't restart from fresh you don't move everything back to the beginning you just resume so when one round ends it's more like it's paused you do the council phase and then you press play and, and resume the game so I, I like that i think that's a nice nice way to play the game and then like i said with the advanced player mats each of these comes with these cards just to explain a little bit more about what their powers are it's pretty simple on the card as i showed it with you but it's nice to have this adds a bit of story and flavour to your character when you're onto those advanced player mats, which I would advise you try and do at least by play by game three. Um, definitely it's possible to do it by game two. It doesn't add much complexity, but uh, adds a lot more to the game, I would say. So these are the, the, the lands that you can conquer here. And this is done down in the, the, the black timer area where you, you have to pay four military. Um, one of the few, well, the only thing on the board where you're doing anything other than paying money. So you pay four military and then you can conquer a land, which is basically you just take a tile from over here. As I said, four will be played face up um, and then the rest you can blindly take. But I've always played face up, there's no real need. So they've got pretty cool names, pretty cool art. But again, you don't really pay a ton of attention to this. The theme is there. You just don't really pay attention to it as you're, you're playing the game. And ultimately what you're doing is you, you pick one. All of them, as you can see, have the four colours on. So it means that you can place them wherever you want. So this one could go under here, which means when you activate your yellow, you now get three money. However, if I were to place it here, I would activate, when I activate my blue, I'd get eight culture. Over here, when I activate my red, I'd get two power. Over here, when I activate, sorry, that's my brown. When I activate my red, I would get six military. So that's a pretty basic card. And as you can see, this is a green one, which means it's, it's general. So the color schemes do give you an indication um, as to what's going on. So the, the purple ones are gonna give you lots of votes. Um, the red ones are gonna give you more military. So when you're playing the game and you're sort of rushing with your brain to make a decision, the color will give you an indication as to what that card is giving you. Blue here is giving you obviously lots of culture. So pretty cool style, I think, for the cards to, to help you make your choices. <clears throat> and by the end of the game, you'll hopefully have at least two on each of these and your engine will become much more powerful, making each turn much more enjoyable as, as you're going. So what else is in the box here? Well, the main thing we haven't shown you yet is the stratagem cards. So you get four of these per player. It's all really clear what ones you get. So you can see each character has a symbol here that is unique to them. And the reverse is different. They have different ones on the back because that means you get different cards, whether you're playing basic or simple. Those, those symbols match the back of the cards here. So it's really clear what ones you want. So let's just take a look at four cards here. And this is, these are basic cards. 
So basically in the basic version of the game, lots of basics there, this will be ultimately what you get. There'll be a variation of these. So everybody will have the chance to just get one culture point, it's pretty simple. You'll have a chance to get one resource of any type, yellow, blue, or red, the um, military, the, the, the money. Um, this is, like I said earlier, a way to break the rule. So how you can remove a worker when there's still a timer there, which is nice, only really to be used on the, the, the purple, but sometimes the green perhaps. And this is how you get extra workers. So you start the game with two workers, you can have up to four. And in this character's case, you pay three votes to get an extra worker. That's different for each character, even on the advanced. So for example, this one, this character has to play seven culture to get their worker. But otherwise, the rest of the, the cards are identical. However, when we get into the advanced cards, you get some real um, different powers, which are, are quite exciting um, and add a lot of variety to the game. My favourite one is one where you are able to do an action twice. So this character, once you move a worker down, you pay the cost, whatever that is, and then you can do the the get, get the reward on the bottom plus whatever reward is next to it as long as you can pay that cost. So that's a really cool power. I really like this one. That one works um, with the card I was showing, the player mat, sorry, that I showed you earlier that is one of the more tricky ones due to the nature of having to spend power to get your your cards, your, your stratagem cards back. So I think that's a, a nice offset of this um, this tricky card here. So you can see the symbol on the back of this is, is Bulk the Warmonger. So this is the guy I was telling you earlier where you have to pay two power to get your cards back. Um, but he has this really cool power here where you can use certain things twice. So what I haven't shown you so far is the workers, which are plastic. One of the other controversies in the game, um, they're not wood, which uh, initially I did, in truth, it did annoy me. Um, but after a, a game, like, who cares? It's plastic instead of wood. I, I really don't see the big deal. I guess it's just different. That's really the truth. Um, but what is, is annoying in the fact that they're plastic is offset by the joy that they obviously look exactly like Rick and Morty, which is joyful. So you get all those workers and these are the cards used in the solo play which like i said i haven't done yet but it's basically the automa very similar to all the other um stone might automas basically it's just telling you this is what the ai controlled player is doing this turn seems seems pretty simple so rest of the stuff in the box is just all the other components so these are tokens that you can use for the voting once you get more than 10 you can use these to to say this is 10 of them this is how you indicate the purple timers so as i said your the game is timed by the purple timer this is flipped three times each time you flip it you knock one of these off the board these are placed here and when you flip it you knock that off the board to remind you that that has been flipped once you flipped it three times that's the end of that round these are the markers that you use for the privilege that i showed you at the top um, so you can just see who's top, middle or bottom or, or fourth in a four player game. And these are the tokens that you use, obviously color player order to tell you um, when you've achieved the, the scores necessary to get those bonuses I was, I was showing you earlier. Um, so when you put those, um, when you score these, you then place your, your piece here to say that you, you've done it and, and you're first, you were the first one to do it, which is only really important if you want to take the the legendary marker. These cubes here, again, all plastic instead of wood, but they're nice, they're, they're good quality. Um, these are, you, 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 they're limited to, to 10 per player, which I think is, is good, but they're, they're decent, they're good quality, they, they, they feel solid and robust. Again, similarly for the, the voting tokens, pretty weird in terms of thematically what they are, just a purple square, but decent, decent quality. And then these are the markers that I mentioned at the very beginning that score your points on your on your character board. So what I found interestingly is, again, they're plastic. On one side, there's a little ridge compared to the other. So if you place it on one side, it does skid around. And if, you, if I shut up for a minute, they make that noise. Whereas if you flip it the other side, much more, Bit more grip there you can hear the difference so just make sure you put it on that side and it will still skid I'm not saying it's not going to skid it just won't skid as much and you, you just there's, there's just a bit of 
friction there as you're moving it compared to the other side where it will just simply skid around like on a nice rink. I'm not sure if that's intentional from Stonemaier at all. It might just be the nature of printing plastic with a 3D printer or whatever it is that they use to do this, but it definitely adds some friction to reduce the, the skidding. So that's it, that's that's what's in, in the box. I think it's a very interesting game. Pendulum has, as I said at the start, polarized opinion, largely because of the component quality. I think also the high profile nature of Jamie Stegmaier himself and Stonemaier Games, but probably also because of the nature of the previous releases that Stonemaier have had with Wingspan, controversy winning, winning best card game in the BGG Awards. It's at heart, not really a card game. I can see why that irks some people, it irked me too. And with Tapestry being hyped as a Civ game when really it's it's not really a Civ game. But cast all that out of the way, is this a good game or not? And for me, yes, yes it is. I think it uses time in a really interesting way. It's it's a real-time game, there's no way, two ways about that, but it's not real-time like other real-time games. It's not like a real-time game such as Escape or Pandemic. Um in 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 that when you're you're playing the game rapid response i mean sorry pandemic rapid response in that when you're playing the game once those timers are up if you haven't done something you lose or die in this game once the timers are up you just pause you go into cancel phase and then move on time is is a resource it's not if you don't do something by the end of the timer it's the end of the game it's a resource to use much in any other worker placement game whereas you're using it to limit the amount of actions that you can do per round so from the multiple games I've had at multiple player counts, it is absolutely not chaotic or frantic at all. No idea where that came from. I get when you watch a four player game of other people doing it, it looks chaotic for sure. But when you're playing it in your own little world doing it, it doesn't feel chaotic whatsoever. Like I said earlier, if anything, it's the, the opposite of that. So I would recommend this game highly to anybody that likes Stonemaier games or likes worker placement games or likes games that are offering something a little bit new and unique in, in the way that they're using a certain mechanic, which in this case is the timers for a real-time game. So that's Pendulum from Stonemaier Games. Hope you enjoyed the info boxing. Thank you.